I'm the leader of what? You the praise and worship leader. All right, y'all stand on your feet. We get ready to do praise and worship. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get up. You two, you two, get up. Hand up. Hand. Hey, what a fellowship. What a joy divine evening. Oh. No, nah, we ain't doing this. Yeah. Sit down, sit down. I heard say you, sing, you singing these traditional songs putting me to sleep. Wait, what you want me to say? Nothing. I want you to get on with the review. <laughs> You know, people don't be knowing these new songs that we really sing because we don't be singing these kind of songs in church no more. We sing praise and worship. Yeah, we don't we, sing, Fred Hammond, we don't Fred sing, Franklin. um, kill you and lay you down. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, welcome back. Welcome back to Calvary. I'm your worship leader for this, um, here Sunday morning or whenever you're gonna watch this. Listen, Greenleaf, <sighs> Lord, Zora, huh? Zora, says so she, See? Done, she done jumped in that dingling lake. Sit, look. Sit, can you can you swim in that ding ling lake? Listen, I don't think so. I knew something happened because my girlfriend hit me up today on Facebook and she was like, Lynette, I can't wait to see your review tonight. Huh? When you get home, don't even eat dinner. You need to watch Greenleaf. I said, Well, that's what I do anyway. Huh? I was I I was ready, but I wasn't ready. Said so change of seasons. Yeah, a whole lot of stuff changed this season. Yeah, um, but uh, if GG. You, uh, but uh, before you get started with that, well, hey, if y'all haven't watched the last two episodes of Greenleaf, hey, the playlist is gonna be down in the panic section right there. That's gonna be the last two, and it's just the second one. Because it was season. two episodes that came on oh, when right. it first started. We're not gonna start. We're not supposed to be arguing in church. Yeah, that's what the deacons do. The deacons argue with the worship leader about the announcement they're trying to make. <laughs> Time. Sit down, Deacon. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> As I was saying before the Deacon interrupted me, Pastor, I got the playlist is going to be down in the panic section like Lady Nika say. Click that, go and watch the last two episodes <laughs> if you had not seen them. Alright, we're going to be all over the all place right. because we Alright, worship leader, now you can take over. If you don't sit your way down, I don't have time for this today. So now we're crossing the church? When they come? stop? And come. When did they ever stop? <laughs> Especially the church mama. The church mama. I, do you know how many times I've been cussed out and cold in church? Huh. huh? I Hey, I didn't get cussed out and cold. I got cussed out with the real words. I ain't never did that. Say, so get pinch you on your goddamn leg and cuss you out. Or you get hit upside the head with that goddamn funeral fan. Mm -hmm. You ever got hit with one of them? Mm -hmm. My grandma's a G. She gonna bust you. So anyway. Look. We got Gigi and her mom. I was getting ready to say something. Oh, we're going to be all over the place because we ain't taking notes. We was eating and taking notes. But anyway, um, we got Gigi and uh, First Lady sitting over at the table, right? Because y'all remember last week, Mr. Um, Ray Fox told her, look, I'm going to go ahead and do this article. And she told him, said, when you do the article, give me a heads up so I can prepare my mama. So that's what she was doing. She was preparing yeah. her mama because uh, it's on the front page. Yep. And you know when I, on the front page. You, and you know whenever a pastor do something, they ain't just Mister. Now she ain't just Mrs. Gigi. Uh uh. They ain't gonna call you by your nickname, Pookie. No. Pumpkin. No. Pooh. Pastor Grace Greenleaf. Yep. She killed him. Yep. Stabbed. No no no. She didn't just kill him. She <laughs> killed the man of the year. So made it even worse. A man of God's own heart. So you killed the most important man in town. <laughs> the pedophile. You killed him. The man of the year. But they don't put that in there. No, nah, they gonna put that in there. Nah. They just gonna say she killed, she murdered the man of the year in his own home. She went, she she was an intruder. Yeah, she broke in <laughs> and murdered him. So first lady was like, you know what? Cold blood. It is what it is. You did what you had to do. All That's right. All right. I, don't, I still I don't, don't trust it. I still me don't. Me either. She a little bit too nice to Gigi. Each and huh? the, I know what she doing. Huh? Hey, she sniffing that cocaine that uh that uh what you call the sniffing on on power. Who? Why do we get there? I don't know. We need to take a goddamn nap. <laughs> so we see um Miss um Sophia. She comes in there right, and she got this look of just like, oh my god, you know. So they're like, what's wrong with you, girl? And she said. I ain't get in. I did not get into um, St. Josephine. Um, what is it? The St. Josephine um, Saint society. society. Yeah. She said, I ain't going to be a, a debutante. And they were like, what? Huh? First lady said, this got to be some kind of mistake. Give because me that phone. 
All that money that we sent to that organization, mm -hmm. all of these green leaf kids don't been over there and mm -hmm. do that school. Yep. Y'all ain't no listen because Zora ain't get accepted either. We gonna move forward with that. So I seen the look on First Lady's face and she was like, mmm. And then she said, you know what? This might have something to do with this this article right, right here. here. That, yeah. that you yeah, that what Gigi said. Gigi thought it had something oh, yeah. to do with it. She's like, said, my fault. Yeah, this is my fault. They couldn't get in. So, um, you know, they kind of smoothed that over. And I said, first lady ain't going to let this go. <clears throat> we So next thing we see, we see her sitting on her sofa in deep thought. She gets the uh, maid to come on over there. She said, mm, Come here. Go on upstairs and get that wooden box. Bring it down, but bring it down real carefully. And if God don't, <coughs> she asked the question. She said, well, so what's in what the box? In there? And I was scared to say, honey, you got a job to do. Don't be asking what's in <laughs> yeah. the box. She said, a gun. She was like, I'm going to ask no more questions. And I said, what the hell is she about I, to when do? When I came there, I said, with that box, I would slid across the floor to I would say, then I would took off running. And I would have been like, today is my last day. <laughs> Did y'all see that Daniel Boone gun? <laughs> oh, you know where that gun came from? Because you know. No. My granddad's guns are way better than that. <laughs> y'all know where that gun came from? I'm going to say something that's going to piss y'all off. But I know where it came from. Because you know they live on the plantation, right? Uh-huh. That's one of uh, Robert E. Lee's guns that he left on the plantation. <laughs> Since we're talking about these statues, let's go ahead and make it relevant. That was Robert E. Lee's gun that he left behind. And they happened to find it when they moved it to the Greenleaf Plantation. And um, what she want to do with this gun is because she knows, uh, what's this girl's name? Um, Jacinta. Yeah. Jacinta evidently is the president or something big yeah. within this um, St. Josephine um, Correlation Society or whatever. And she invites her over. You know, and they start looking at yearbooks and they started reminiscing and this, that, and the third. And she shows her the gun because she know that she's very fond of uh, um, artifacts like this. Yeah. And she was like, you know what? I think that someone like you should have something like this. Da, 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 da. But, um, and then the, she said, you know what? What I didn't understand is why didn't you send in any submissions this year for um your granddaughters and all that? She said, but I did. She said, yeah, I did submit them. She said, no, nothing came across my desk. I would have remembered that. I would have remembered your contributions. And I said, well, did you forget to pay into the society too? Did you, pay, you know, forget to pay your dues? Because it sounded like she was talking about some money too. Yeah. But First Lady ain't addressed that. She just said that I sent in the email. So I might not send in the check, but I did send the email too. So, Miss um, Jucinta said, I didn't get the emails. Maybe, you know, everything was filtered through the secretary. Maybe she got it wrong, whatever. She said, well, who would that secretary be? She said, um, first lady skinks. She's the secretary over this, um, she was like, oh. society. She said, oh, okay. Okay, so now we're playing with my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. So she decided to <laughs> pay old first lady Keisha Cole skinks a visit. Had that girl in that corner just as just as scared as she can be. I don't know she was scared. She was kind of She was scared at first. And then when she realized she didn't do nothing wrong because she had me twisted for a minute. I said, did she? Did is she, she just a sneak? Because you know I like her. I said, but, but is she but just I kinda think she, I, I kind of thought she didn't do it. I mean, because I know her. she put amongst the puppet for her husband. Mm -hmm. So I thought that he did it. That's what I was mm -hmm. thinking. And that's what First Lady said. First Lady said, yeah. look, I know that your husband got some art against my whole family, but this right here, the grandchildren, like we always say, keep the babies out of it. Uh-huh. That's between us. This it's our fight. And she said, I didn't do it. I don't know what you're talking about. Whatever you said did not come to me. So she told, you know, she's looking around her office and whatnot, and um, she's asking First Lady Keisha Cole Skanks, what's that you got right there? She said, oh, I got that from the Southern Woman, something, something, something. You know, I was inspired by you. I thought that a, a good, classy, wholesome first lady should have a piece such as this in her home. So, that was inspired by you. But but listen, get up out my face. Uh -huh. Get. First lady basically threatened her and said, listen, if I find out that you don't did something to these applications, she cussed her out in first lady mode. She said something about a butterfly in the glass. And I said, basically, I she said, I'm going to buck you up. Yeah, yeah. That's what she just should have said. So, first lady, first lady, Greenleaf, mm -hmm. she goes back to her church, and she goes to her secretary, and she's asking her, please go back 
and look at my files and see Find when I email. sent this email. What I thought was going to happen was while she was in that computer, we were going to see some stuff that we were supposed to, to see. Yeah, I that's said, what I thought too. And first lady looking at that next video, uh -huh, what yeah. you doing? <laughs> it's it's some, airing your or, son. Or some dildos or, or some vibrators from da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> I said she, she what's Aaron's daddy name? I can't remember. Is his pictures on there? Y'all uh -huh. been Skyping and Snapchatting? Huh? I ain't seen none of that though, but that's just how my mind works sometimes. Uh -huh. But she finally finds the email. So girl said, I'm gonna go ahead and print this for you. Go and take that back on over there to um to first lady Keisha Cole Skanks. Throw that in her face. The hey, I sent the goddamn emails uh -huh. and the whole Here time I said, hmm. This is a little bit too got darn easy. I said, I don't think maybe she didn't send them. That's what I said. I said, maybe they were still in a draft form or something yeah, like they that. Yeah, she thought they sent, you know, sometimes you send an email and that thing will pop up and actually say no subject yeah, or, or a word is spelled wrong or something like that. Yeah. So, so she, she sent it. She sent it, all right. Mm -hmm. So she gets over there to Keisha Cole Skanks. At first, Lady Keisha Cole Skanks said, okay. All right, now it proves that you sent it, but I'm telling you, I still didn't get it. And she looking at it, she looking at it, she said, uh-huh. First lady, um, Greenleaf said, hey, you ain't got nothing smart to say back? She said, mm, I kind of do. Uh, <laughs> see right here? It's supposed to be dot .org. You got dot, dot .com. Said. So, somebody got it? But it, it won't want me. me. <laughs> I said, ooh, egg in the face. Egg yeah. in the face, first lady. I said, oh, you took an L, but tonight I, you didn't bounce back. You did bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, hmm. Let me go ahead and give y'all some wisdom tips for y'all business owners, all that good stuff. I know sometimes we, tr we try to be cheap and stuff, but everything that we do is a tax write-off, so don't even worry about it. Just pay it, yeah. whatever. If you buy an email and you buy the .com, by the dot org as well yep because people will email you and they will get it wrong every freaking single time yeah so while you out there buying your domains and all of that buy them both yep if you are xyz.com buy xyz.org if it's available yep and if it ain't available you better see if you can change the name of your business because more than likely that other company is going to get all of your business yep especially if you want I ain't especially even if you that. want it popping yes i ain't even gonna charge you for that next we're gonna move <laughs> Zora, see, Gigi told me on Twitter that they be watching our reviews and stuff while they're in the makeup chair. So, Zora, come here. Come here. You growing don't, up too goddamn fast. Don't hurt her too bad. Don't hurt her I'm too not, bad. because she in that age where we all did stupid stuff. I'm ready to say, I'm ready to say, you did some of that bullshit too. I wasn't even in a hurry. I was younger. That's even worse. I know that why I ain't judging her. So you jumped in that river early. Too early. God darn. Damn, but that experience paid off then. Huh. <laughs> but but yeah. anyway, Zora, don't listen to that part of the conversation. Zora got Isaiah over there in the bed. Well, in the bed. Was they at the They was at the house. Was they at Jacob's house? They was at Jacob's house. Because she said, if my daddy come, you're going to have to go out the window. I said, what the hell is going on here? So he out there saving the world and the daughter at home in the bed. And getting taken to bed. Huh? Mm -hmm. Let's take you to bed. Bed. <laughs> Her and Isaiah get the kissing and the rubbing. And he says, so what? You want to stop? You don't want to do this no more? And I said, what y'all don't did it before? No, I don't think, but I I think, I don't they, think they talked was... about it. They talked about it, you know. And the next thing we know... They on there kissing, rubbing, and she don't put her, gapped her leg over. And I said, mm-mm, not while we, not mm. while we listening to Cut Stay Woke. Not while we listening to Stay Woke. Uh -huh. Come on, come on. <laughs> he's not white, but he's light enough that this light should be able to work. <laughs> Zora! Oh, my God. Unfortunately, dog. That it bush, didn't work. That bush kick don't work. So she went over there, and she's so Sophia. She said, Sophia, I got something to tell you, girl. But I'm going to need you not to judge me. Sophia said, why would I judge you? She said, honey, I still been seeing Isaiah. What? She said, listen, just because granddaddy <laughs> don't you don't in you. a bathtub <laughs> full of water. Don't no, me. mean you better me. She said, touche, continue. Continue. She said, child, we did it. You did what? We had sex. She was like, oh, sex? What? Then she said, oh, how was it? <laughs> I knew it was coming. I said, Sophia. I knew it was coming. I she knew said, it was, coming. it was different. 
She was yeah. like, good, different, bad, what? And they say, we know we see Sophia on her goddamn on Skype, uh -huh. FaceTime or something. She talking to her boo. He's sitting on some steps. I said, what, what the, the hell, hell are you at? I said, he ain't in college, so why is he sitting on, but don't worry about it. She <laughs> said, have you ever did it before? He said, nah. nah. He you? Said, have you? Nah. He said, why are you asking? I said, Sophie. Oh, uh -huh. she curious. Don't, don't, don't do it. Do so I in other words, other words, player, she handed you the push through, through the freaking uh, FaceTime. I said, mm -mm. She handed it to you. Mm -mm. All you got to do is close the deal. So then we see Charity. <laughs> Charity is having writer's block. Um, the song songstress kind. I can't talk tonight. No. And no, um, no, she ain't no writer's block. What? She all fucked up. She done, done messed over on Kevin that way. And he done ran away like a lost child. Yeah. That's mad. Man, that's messed up. I'm still worried about said, Kevin. Said she she had a my friend tracker on and he, and he, he took he himself he took off. off of it. So Wait a minute, what are you doing tracking tracking Kevin like that anyway? Yeah. That's a little weird. It is a little weird. It's like you weird. do your kids like if that. If y'all got a tracker on somebody other than your kids, you are weird. If, I, if, I, if yeah. I gotta put a tracker on you to find we out where you're going, divorce. yeah. If I don't trust you like that, yeah, we don't need to be together. Mm -mm. But there's ways to find me if you need to find me. Yeah. Like you can log into my freaking account and, and track my phone and all that stuff. Yeah. We I ain't saying that. I, ain't got, booze, get, man, I, I don't that. have the energy. If I got to do that, you can go. So free relationship advice. If you got to keep tabs on your girlfriend, boyfriend, or whoever you would, your significant other, and you got to trace their every move, and they got to tell you what time they're coming home, when they're doing all this booze, get. You don't need to be one. Yeah. I mean, just be respectful. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm talking about being obsessed. Yeah. That's crazy as hell. He, he going to the barber shop to get his hair cut. What time is you going to be back? I don't I know. I don't know. Because I don't know how many people are going to be ahead of me getting their hair cut. Look, and if they anything like the barbers we know up here. How, huh. how, how your barber do a stand? When my, listen, <laughs> when I go to a barber shop sometimes and watch Stanley barber cut his hair. See, he won't, make, he won't make sure this part right here even like that. So this is what he do. He go. He. Yeah. <laughs> and then he take this big shop light <laughs> and shine the light on him. <laughs> he ain't got that no more. Cause they got, he they got, got it. They got the lighting system in there now, you mama. They got, he, they had the light system. No, not like, like, not like they got the, uh, they got the pin light. The, the one coming, the uh, chandelier lights coming. Oh yeah, over. I haven't been. So in he ain't got that shop light no more. <laughs> but yeah, he, he ever lined up though. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he don't be never playing. Oh. So uh, what the hell is we talking about? Relationships, don't worry about it. but that's all right. It don't even matter. Like so charity like calls um Carlton, and because basically mm -hmm. she needs somebody to get her out of writer's block because she has a meeting with Jedi already. And she need her music to be on her and mm. whatever. So she calls Carlton and Carlton was like, uh -huh. is you, you. Is this, no, he said, is this Charity Greenleaf? Really? <laughs> okay. He said it sarcastically too. <laughs> Look, listen, Carlton came up in that day go church office, boy, and I hollered, I screamed. Because you know when Carlton was coming to the church, he was kind of being real conservative with his lifestyle or whatever. Because he didn't want to get fired even though mm -hmm. that didn't work. Mm-hmm. He came up in that office with everything that he could find to say, I'm gay, and huh. put it on that day, yep. and he walked up in that church, and, and I said, been not say I to said, me. Carlton, <laughs> boom, buddy, boom. <laughs> he walked up in that church, and he was like, ah, back then you didn't want me. Now yeah. you're stuck. you hey, all, all on me. me. What you want? He said, I walked up in the church, man. He said it was good to see uh see the Diggins, the first lady. The he usher. loved it there. Yeah, he did. He loved it there. Matter and of fact, he put he made a good impact when he was there. Yeah, and they should be ashamed of they got doing stuff, but anyway, I'm not gonna <clears> go into <throat> it. So he basically laid her out, said, Listen, I was your friend. I didn't like how you handled them getting me up out of here. But what do you want? She said, I'm stuck. Mm-hmm. Okay. He said, but I still want to know, why was it that you dropped me like that? We were friends. Mm -hmm. She said, I've been through a lot. So he was like, what did? It, what was it that you went through that you can't talk to me about? And she was like, really? I can't talk to you about? I couldn't talk to you about that? And I kind of was with Charity on that one. Yeah, I was like, it would have been hard to kind of process it and process it. But at the same time, it might have been the best. Yeah, because he probably he could have he, he gave her some advice. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> Carlton, when she told Carlton, he kind of was like, 
Oh, oh hmm. I understand now. I can't even yeah. be mad with you. He said, but this is the time where you lean on your friends the, the most. most. And that is yeah. so yeah, true. Yeah, because a true friend don't care what you is and what you've done or what you're getting ready to do. No. They love you regardless, yeah. man. And they still going to tell you about yourself. So oh, yeah. if you wrong in oh, a yeah. situation, I'm going to give you gay straight by track. We going to tell you about yourself. Exactly. So that's basically what Carlton was saying. Listen, I was here. You needed somebody to um her shoulder to lean on and you ain't even pick up the phone to call mm -hmm. me. And she was like, you know, I was processing that. And then I still have not grieved my baby girl. Because y'all forgot that that baby was a twin. That's right. And um, she was like, it was kind of like she just disappeared. Nobody talks about it. So she was able to have that grieving moment with good old Carlton. And I said, Carlton. Um, because she said something powerful. She said, we were so much dealing with Kevin being gay. We didn't have time to grieve my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? So the family mm -hmm. thought that was more important because everything was about image. Yeah, so. So then we saw that they had this meeting over there at Triumph, right? I thought Gigi had went over there and whooped Skank's tail because I still yeah. want to know. I who, said, here you go. Who whipped Skank's tail? Yeah, the tail woman is about to happen. Nope. They over there for um Memphis a, meeting. Uh, a Baptist Correlation meeting. Uh huh. So they over there, all the pastors from that community get together and do a round table, basically. And it was Jacob's time to speak. And Jacob was talking about he going to have the real church. I said, uh, you just church, a shady. The church without walls. The I love a church without walls, to be honest with you. And if you doing it right. And he said, I'm doing this because Jesus himself gave it to me. Bishop looking at him like, mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you. But he on point, though. He said he, he going gonna, gonna to clothe the naked and he going to feed the hungry. If he's doing it for the right reasons, like we were talking about it last week in the comments, I don't. I love what Jacob is doing. Yeah. But don't do it to try to prove something to your pops. Mhm. Mm yep. You know what I mean? Because that means that your heart ain't in the right place. Your motives ain't right. Exactly. At the end of the day, you still trying to prove a point to the man across the street. But Jacob, I think Jacob always been innovative like that. But his he dad, his daddy always blocked him. him and Jesus. So I think it's a little bit. I think it's a little bit of his innovation. And I'm going to sock it to dead at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to rub it in your face because y'all ain't got no outreach like that. So my little on my little center blocks, I'm going to have <laughs> outside of your church. I'm going to set up my little cheese and ham sandwich table and have my little water, water. cheese and ham sandwich uh, table. I'm going to have my Kool-Aid and water. I'm going to have my clothes. And, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my... care of the community. Hello, amen. The church say amen. Huh? Amen. Now, if he gets some cots set up out there for them to so sleep, cot. Oh, I thought you said something else. Say what? I'm like, um, Jacob, nah, that ain't the time. You don't eat now. Nah, you Oh, nah. Bishop would lose his mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell is he tense? So you need to yeah, say so you need to find a facility for that right uh, there. Uh I mean, let you know what would be powerful? If Bishop Greenleaf would tell Jacob, say, hey, I know you got a lot of homeless people. Hey, we got this big church. Why don't I donate a part the part that Kevin yeah. was working when he was there. Yeah. Why don't you lend that to your son so that the people that he's feeding and all of that can, can have somewhere right to sleep? In there. Yep. That would be a awesome part. Well, Bishop did say when they got to talking about it after the after the meeting, he did say, "Well, we maybe, talk. well, maybe we can talk and we can put something together. Come mm -hmm. on over to dinner tonight." <laughs> yeah. So he got up there. He made his compel his compelling um speech about his vision for his church without walls. And then another father had got up there and he had talked about um, just visiting this 16 year old boy that ran away from home and he had a, a medical emergency. Basically, the boy ran away because he was not accepted because he, he is a homosexual. So everybody around the table got really, really quiet. So Grace was like, well, hold on, wait a minute. What are we gonna how, do? How is he doing it? What are we gonna do? And nobody had an answer. But is there going to question, what is it that we're going to do? That's a soul too. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be the real church, let's be a real church to all and not discriminate. Look, huh? 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 And Jacob, don't you even try it because your daughter over there, she can get him sex. She ain't married. Mm -hmm. Huh? So you going to turn your back on her? Huh? Yeah, what was good enough for the goose is good enough for the gander. Mm -hmm. Don't play. I don't like that dang old lopsided God doing mm -hmm. um, sinning crap. But what I found out, in in most cases, not all cases, but in some cases, people will point their fingers when that's somebody else's son or somebody else's daughter. That did but not when it's their son or their daughter, now some of them will go put go balls to the wall with them too and criticize yeah. them and down them. And well, the same thing happens to their 16 year old. Sometimes will happen to them like that too. But if some of them, 
when it happens to them, then all of a sudden they want everybody to be on board with them and accept them. You better not say nothing about my son, my daughter. I love them the same, but when the shoe was on, was not on the other foot, you were judging somebody else's son or daughter. Uh -huh. Time to put them out. Put them out. Uh -huh. what? No, no, no. Not my baby. Uh -uh. And if you try to step to me, I will bust you. But at the same time, most time when you find yourself judging somebody for something, when it's, it's not end, yours. It's going to end up at your front door. Right there. It's, I've seen it coming. happen so many it times. It shows up. It shows up. People be criticized. Yo, daughter got pregnant before she got married. She, got mm -hmm. she was a teenage pregnant. Now look at your daughter. Now look at your daughter. She wobbling. She ain't coming to church until that baby about two years old. Yep. Because you don't put your mouth on somebody else so bad. She ashamed and she shouldn't be. Bring yep. your tail right on up in here with that baby. Send them down to children's church and let's go. Mm -hmm. And let it go. Yep. So, what else happened? So Gigi, she was really... She, was, she was still interested in seeing what the heck the church is going to do about this here thing. Nah, nah, nah. Skanks. Enchanted her with like, saying, like saying, said. you know, we heard this story from, from the father. Now, we, as a church, we need to do something about this. Yeah. And I said, but I heard that skank, scheme, scam undertone to it. He oh, never yeah. he never said, I'm going to do something. He we. said, we. Mm -hmm. So, what that means is, y'all going to do it. And if it, if it be successful, I back you up. But if it all goes to hell, I want my idea. Because I spearheaded the initiative. Yeah, uh-huh. And y'all handled it the wrong way. Uh-huh. That's not how, that wasn't the vision that God had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she went over there to the office and was talking to him about it, what we gonna do. And he was like, I don't have an answer for that. He pulled out the cross, talking about something. This is who he is. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a man of this man. Shut up. I got a big mouth. I'm a small man, but they always say I had a big mouth. That got me in trouble. I know. Yeah. Whatever. But anyway. So she was like, okay. What is really going on? We say we are church, but why is it when we get to this? This issue is a problem. All of a sudden, it stops at this. We can't serve nobody once we realize that this is there. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was like, preach. Preach, preach, GG. Y'all was good with Carlton when he had y'all choir rocking. Uh-huh, y'all was shouting and dancing. Yep. And then as soon as y'all really confirmed it, oh, he got to go. Mm -hmm. And they already said the church ain't, the choir ain't been the it's same since he left. Ain't singing. Matter of fact, they ain't on key. They ain't coming half, ain't half coming to rehearsal. Ain't got the robes on right. They ain't setting the atmosphere no more. Uh, Bishop got to preach through all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, going back to this um, St. Josephine debacle that we're dealing with, where the girl's not able to get into school, the first lady don't realize that she don't bucked up. She tried to go talk to her husband, Bishop Greenleaf, about it, right? Yeah. And she, she didn't expect what she was about ready to see. Listen. Huh? She bust up in that office. <laughs> she bust up in that office. Huh? And Miss Rochelle Coochie. <laughs> Rochelle Jezebel. Cross. Sitting in the office on, on his desk with her puss all up in his face. I said, if you... Cut your cross. If you don't I'm get like, ain't you ain't when, ain't when you have a meet with the bitch, you're supposed to be on the other side of the desk? She's sitting on the desk. And she might as well have taken the guy doing pineapple upside down cake and fed He was walking him. that thing. Won't he? And she said, she said, I took you as a, a upside down okay. pineapple kind of guy. I, I like, said, what? 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 I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. What? You ain't fooling me. What? Bottoms up? Uh-huh. Face down, bottoms up. Boo. I said... Hey? Bishop, how you gonna handle it? He, how you gonna handle it? He started blushing. He will eat that guy doing cake. He looking like Lester Wallace over there. <laughs> Y'all look, I ain't calling Bishop Lester Wallace all season. Have nah, he ain't even calling him Bishop all Lester Wallace was ready. All he needed is that smiley face um, mug. I'm trying That's to That's all he need. Lord have mercy. First lady bust up in that office she and Rochelle like, Coochie Cross got her coochie she, in his face. She was like, he, and was my, like, he said, this is where I went to dinner with. She was like, is that right? I said, yeah, mommy wig. That's who he went to um, dinner with. <laughs> and she was like, huh. So she went to talk about, you know, we got a problem going on. Can't get the girls into school, blah, 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 blah. So Rochelle speaks up and she says, well, I know, um, what's her name? I know that lady. Yeah, the lady that, that owned the school, whatever, you know. Um, name. It do um, matter. What her name is. Don't matter because I can't find it. Jacinta. I know Jacinta. I can, you know, talk to her if I, she said, no. We'll go ahead and handle that ourselves. So she, Rochelle was like, oh, hell. I don't bucked up now. Bishop said, you know what? They ain't got nothing to do You know, I just good. thought about something. Well, Maybe this because of my experience in the, 
in the cutch. Uh-huh. Where is Bishop's armor bearers at? Right? Why ain't nobody covering him with this Jezebel in his office? <laughs> Why she got the door closed with her all by herself? And that's the first thing we ever Causing learned. The, Don't you the, ever be with the yeah. opposite sex by yourself. Nah, because it's your word again. She could come out there and say, man, Bishop had me all up and down this office, boy. Matter of fact, he tried to rape me. And it's your word against hers. Because you was in the office with those locked by yourself. But from that from, from that dinner, when we get to that dinner, I got to say something else. What? Yeah. What you got to say? Yeah, go on. Go well, I'm going to go ahead and go, go to the right, dinner. Go on to the dinner. Well... Later on, when First Lady realized that she had bucked up and she really couldn't get through the way that she needed to get through because she really didn't make that mistake herself and she had messed up because First Lady Keisha Cole Skanks had already called to the head of the head of the head of the organization and told him how much of a fool you came in here and cut up and bet. Uh -huh. And she said, I don't want to have nothing to do with you no more. So now her strings that she had, she can't even pull no more because she came in there and bucked up. So she realizes that the only person that could probably help me at this time would be Miss Rochelle Coochie Cross. <laughs> so she told her husband, said, listen, get Coochie Cross over to dinner tonight, you know, because I got something that I might need her to work out for me. And he was like, okay, uh -huh. I, can do said, that. I can do that. I can do that. Uh -huh. I said, I bet you I bet you can get that. Yeah, you can make that happen. He probably called in um, David's voice. Uh -huh. Why, yes. <laughs> would you like to come to dinner tonight? So they sitting at the dinner table. They asking her all kinds of questions and they having the most intimate family discussions that you could probably have in front of a stranger. And I'm thinking like, what the hell? Like she's And she's right soaking there. it all up. Uh-huh. You know, they talking about <laughs> Kevin being gay and leaving and uh -huh. this, that, and the third. And, you know, um, being gay and in the church and what y'all going to do. Talking about Gigi uh, is under um, Skank's spell right now yep. and all of this. And Rochelle sitting up there looking like... And I said, is that you too? Because she was looking like, oh, hell. All right. I said, uh -huh. all right, but we'll keep our eye on you. You might not even want Bishop. You might want the first lady. I don't know. Oh, I know what's going on. So. I, I know what's going on. They asked her, said, uh, why was it that you left your old church? She, mm -hmm. she said, uh -huh. you know what? I had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And she said. My pastor was a supporter of the way that he should have been. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he really didn't come by and mm -hmm. pray with me. And Bishop said, Booski. Oh, okay. First lady uh -huh. said, well, we pride ourselves over at Calvary for <clears throat> our sick and shut in ministry. So if something, like, if you get it again, we're going to have your back. And I'm sitting here like, what uh -huh. kind of Booski is this? Uh -huh. And I was saying to myself, you know, coming from a church arena in the church world, we got to start putting all that pressure on pastors. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pressure. To be Jesus in our lives when stuff go on. Yes, you should have the support of your ministry, but there are other people in the ministry that should be delegated to do stuff like that. Exactly. Because that is one person that you will absolutely drive in the ground. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens is they will drive themselves in the ground. Will be there for your grandma, your mama, your daddy, your pop pop, everybody that will um, baptize your children mm -hmm. and their children's children. And the moment that something happens to them, you ain't nowhere to be found. Nowhere. Nope. The moment that they fall on hard times, you gone. You bet not raise an offering for or, the pastor. Or don't let them do nothing wrong. Oh, yeah. They going straight oh, to hell. Uh-huh. But he was good when he was praying over your grandma and got her through cancer. Uh-huh. So yep. stop putting all that pressure on pastors alone. Yes, your ministry should be there. But... Be receptive of the people that they put in place because we don't bend to places sometimes where they be like, uh huh, it's good that you stop by, but where, but where is, is Bishop? My, yeah, and people will do that, so that makes him be like, you know what, mm -hmm. I still got to go because such and such ain't gonna be at peace and at ease with the church unless I pop up. So, y'all be receptive of somebody else other than your pastor coming by and calling mm -hmm. you and stuff. As long as it's a representation of the exactly. church. Exactly. Receive the help. Receive the God doing help. God doing it. So anyway, so she told her story about what happened to her and they assured her that if you, you know, over here you ain't gonna have these kind of problems. Mm -hmm. What you had to say about that God doing dental? God doing, what her name, Coochie Cross, is a God doing agent of the Skanks Devil of Hell Baptist <laughs> Church. You think so? Because she said the last church that I came from, I was over at, at Skank's church. She no, said, she wasn't. No, no, no. Let, let me finish. She said Skank's church almost had me, but it was something about him. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Skank's them done sent that girl over there 
to entice Bishop with the Jezebel booty. I'm not even gonna say you wrong. But, but the last but, time we all tried to say you were wrong, y'all trying right. to say y'all trying to say I was wrong because the stereotypes is that pastors fall prey to young, pretty women. But they usually which, which, do. What is they usually do? But it's a man. But Bishop is falling for it. He getting weak. He eating pineapple upside down cake. Next week, she gonna bring some, bring him some friggin' chocolate cake. Some pound cake. Oh, yeah. You oh. got it when you do that pound yeah, cake, she, right? She gonna make some fried chicken. Ah. Uh -huh. And before she know it, they gonna be in the big bomb bellies. And tell you, watch this. <laughs> Stop it. Yup, watch this. <laughs> All right, Jake. Uh-huh. Say, watch this. See, see, what gonna happen is, uh, you made me lose my train of thought, but, uh, uh, what, what I ready to say? Lord, you made me, yeah, you got me all, you got me all messed up. Lord, what I get ready to say? Bumping bellies. Yeah, they gonna be bumping bellies. Uh, oh, yeah. Skank said, because your all mama Skank said, the last thing he do, he was gonna take the bishop down. He did say that. And you guess what? Usually a scandal, adulterous scandal, will always take a pastor down. Sure enough. So next thing we know was <laughs> they had gotten into a little bit of heated discussion and, and then dinner was over. But first they said, you know what? Coach Cross, I'm so sorry about the way I treated you back at the uh -huh. church. I was in a bad space. It didn't have nothing to do with you. Coach Cross said, no, honey, you didn't offend me. You lie, Wanda. She yeah, did. Yeah, did. <laughs> she said, you know, you told me that you knew Jacinta. I may need you to do something for me. I said, oh, hell. And the next thing we know, that we see little Sophia coming in the house, running, hollering, and screaming, I got it, I got it. I said, oh, Grandma made, and um, Grace was like, what you, what the, what the hell did my family do? Mm -hmm. So she told us, she said, you know what, Gigi, let me go ahead and confess. I made a mistake. I sent the email, but I sent it to the wrong address. It wasn't you. Yeah. This time. Yeah, this time. You yeah. looked at her like, I uh -huh. knew you was going to say something uh -huh. slick out your mouth. But she was like, you know, thank you so much. So basically the girls are in, in the school now. So then we see old Charity over there. She's singing her song or whatever. Did y'all know that Charity is um, C.C. Wine and some um, niece? In case y'all didn't know that, that's, that's her niece. So she's over there singing her song or whatever. And Jabari, you know, he's listening. I said, you know, you're a little too close, player. And next thing we know, she hit that little high note, and he was like, I think this is a hit. Mm -hmm. And she turned around and just laid one on his lips. And I said, if you was uh -huh. going to be with Jabari, you might as well kept Kevin. Hmm. And that's all I'm going to say, straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Sue up, Sue's on. Holla. Holla.